Hello, IZ viewers. This is Val Tapia of K38 IZ Videos. We have on the phone right now a pleasure and an honor to speak with musician, songwriter, and now adding author to his resume, Mr. John Oates of the legendary Daryl Hall and John Oates. Hi, John. Good morning. Good morning. How's it going? Real good. Thank you. Uh, I'll start off with the, the book. You just released your book called Change of Seasons earlier this year. Um, how long did it take from start to finish to complete? I guess it took a lifetime to uh, to get started. Sure. <laughs> um, yeah, it was an interesting process. I'd never written a book before, and um, I didn't know how long it was going to take. And uh, I'm very, uh, I, I was very, you know, I was a bit of a perfectionist. I wanted to make sure it was as good as it could be. So I did a lot of rewriting and a lot of re, re uh, reviewing to make sure that it, you know that I was getting my point across. So uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed the process. It was definitely different than songwriting. Though. Yeah, I mean, I, I was very impressed with the writing in and of itself because being you were a journalism major in college and it was well-written and arguably one of the most well-written books I've read of autobiographies in recent memory. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. I, I've always looked at myself as a writer and I wanted it to be, I wanted to be, you know, not only, you know, I, I wanted to be informative and, and tell my story, but I wanted it to be artful, and, you know, and I, I went out of my way to, uh, to, to work on that aspect of it. Yeah, there's a there's a certain joy that I noticed, um, in the, particularly when you were writing about your teen years, and it's almost like it came off the pages. I was I was very impressed how incredibly proud you were of the time you grew up in musically, and just it just screamed enthusiasm. <laughs> well, you know, I'm very uh, yeah, I've been I've been fortunate and blessed to be to be born at a certain time. You know, really, my my entire life parallels the the birth of rock and roll. Uh, I was born I was born before rock and roll began. And um, so I got to see it firsthand, I got to experience it. And being musical, a musical person, uh, I, I could really absorb it in a, a, you know, in a way. And uh, so, so, you know, I think it's just unique in the fact that I, I got a chance to grow up in Philadelphia during a time when music was having a resurgence and R&B music was at its, uh, you know, a certain peak and, uh, and get to be really in the epicenter of all this music happening at the same time was a really, you know, just the, the, perfect, uh, the perfect storm of, of, uh, of timing and, and uh, influence. Yeah. You, you mentioned something at the beginning of the book that really caught my eye and I, I never, it never really dawned on me and I guess I can, I can understand where, where, what you mean by it when you said that you've never referred to Hall, Daryl Hall and Jones as a duo. It's, it's never been Hall and Oates, it's Daryl Hall and John Oates. I found that really interesting because I think the general public always just says Hall and Oates. Um, you do find well, there's significance in that. to say Hall and Oates and, and think of it as a duo, but we, we don't think of ourselves that way. We've right. always thought of ourselves as two individuals working together. And uh, I know it seems to be a subtle distinction, but it's important because we are really two completely different people. Right. And um, that's, uh, that's how we've always perceived ourselves, and that's how we would like the world to perceive us. Right. Hey, take us back to uh, 1967, when the two of you, you and Daryl, saw The Temptations live. What was the experience like? Well, Daryl, Daryl's group, uh, he had a group called The Temptones, and The Temptations had taken them under, the, under their wing and kind of helped them out. Uh, so Daryl was actually personal friends with them. Uh, and he, when I first met Daryl, he introduced me to them, and that was very impressive, you know, to, to have, uh, you know, a guy say, hey, man, come on, be our childhood idols, basically. Uh, and so, you know, going to the Apollo Theater together, sat, you know, sat, went in the dressing room, sat in the first row, and it was a really amazing experience and something I'll never forget, and something that we re kind of recreated again in the mid-'80s when we uh, did our album Live at the Apollo and brought Eddie Kendrick and David Ruffin on stage to kind of recreate that moment. Wow. Uh, and go back a little bit further back, your very first concert was Bill Haley and his Comets, is that correct? Wait a minute, I, I can't hear you. Say again? Uh, your, the first concert you attended, you go, I think at age seven or eight, uh, Bill Haley and his Comets. Yeah, yeah, at Willow Grove Amusement Park in, in Pennsylvania, when it first moved to Pennsylvania. I was just a little kid, uh, and uh, I remember going to the amusement park not knowing, of course, that there was going to be any music involved. I was a little kid and interested in going to an amusement park. And then uh, in the band show, Bill Haley was playing, and I heard him perform. It was a pretty amazing experience. Yeah. Uh, tell us about the new CD that accompanies the book. I kind of liken it as the way albums used to be. They'd have a little poster sometimes, and it was kind of a, a crackerjack box. 
yeah. Well, I just wanted to include some music that was a little bit uh, more representative of, of the early influences that I had. A little bit more of the roots and the blues and the folk music that, that kind of informed me uh, as, a, as a kid before, before I began, the, you know, the Hall and Oates journey. Great. Let me go ahead and remind our viewers, uh, we're speaking with uh, John Oates of Daryl Hall and John Oates, who will be here in concert on Monday, July 17th at the Gila River Arena. Tickets will be available at the Arena box office and Ticketmaster.com. Just want to get that word in, John, to get people ready for the show. A lot of fans here are excited for this. Well, looking forward to coming to play. We have a great tour going with Alan Stone and Tears for Fears, and uh, it's going to be awesome. And um, the Hall and Oates band is on fire and having a good time, so uh, we're ready to go. Yeah, how is, uh, you guys, how has the tour been going overall? What's that? How has the tour been going overall with Tears for Fears? Oh, it's been incredible. I mean, just the, the amazing the turnout to our shows. I mean, we've been planning to 10, 12, 13, 14,000 people every night. It's just been absolutely incredible. And uh, it's been, uh, you know, a highlight of the summer for sure. Yeah. Uh, now going back to the book uh, really quickly, uh, I noticed another thing caught my eye. The British invasion was something at the time you weren't really a big fan of. Is that correct? And, and you, you refer to it, quote, rehash of American roots music resold to a new generation of teens at the time. Is that correct? Yes, it's absolutely correct. Uh, to me, I, I had already heard the, the original music before they, the, a lot of the British bands basically, you know, um, Re recycled it back to America, and, and you know, so to me, it sounded like you know, um, kind of, uh, you know, it just didn't, it didn't resonate with me. Uh, I was listening to Muddy Waters and Chuck Berry and Little Richard, you know, back in the fifties, and so when I heard, you know, the Beatles doing that and Rolling Stones kind of doing, re you know, recycling the blues, to me, it just sounded like, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, wasn't wasn't moving me. Let's put it that way. Sure. No, and again, that, that's, that's very common because I always hear the stories about musicians of your era saying that America somehow gravitated to Britain and Britain gravitated towards America in terms of the musicians. Well, I think it's, it was a shared thing, you know. Um, I mean, if you really want to look at it from a long view, uh, American folk music came from the British Isles. Yes. Uh, you know, Celtic and, and uh, scotch Irish ballads and songs that were brought over in, in the early, you know, in the 1700s and 1800s formed the basis for American folk music. So, uh, you know, for that music then to go back to England and get recycled and sent back to America again, it's just kind of a big, uh, kind of like a lending library of music. Right. Okay, and uh, as far as um, the tour, I've been reading some reviews of the shows. You guys actually came here to Phoenix last year, last September, actually. And are you guys continuing the, the uh, set list of kind of reworking some of the material? Oh, yeah, we've definitely reworked the set list for this new tour. Um, it's a little bit different. Um, we've added a couple old, you know, deeper tracks, uh, taken a few out. Uh, but we still play the hits. You know, we play the songs that people expect to hear. Right. But we always add a few extras. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. Putting a set list together must be difficult, but it's great that you guys are, are pick, putting in a few deeper cuts because there are a lot of diehard fans who have been there from day one for you guys, and it's very cool that you guys are considering that as well. Well, I think the hardcore fans want to hear the deeper cuts, but I think the, the general fans, you know, the more casual fans, they want to hear the hits. Sure. So, you know, we have a professional responsibility in a way to play the songs that I think people expect to hear, but at the same time, we, we want to stretch out a little bit when we can. Right. And uh, just a reminder, once again, we're speaking with John Oates of Daryl Hall and John Oates, who will be here in, at the Gila River Arena on Monday, July 17th. Uh, Tears for Fears are also on the bill. And again, pick up tickets at Ticketmaster.com or the Gila River Arena box office. And uh, John, real quick, if there's anything you wanted to add, anything you w wanted to let the fans know, that, like I said, a lot of fans are really excited for you guys to be here. Um, well, just looking forward to playing. You know, we, we've had to, we've uh, separated this tour into a couple different lakes. Uh, we just took a little short break, and we're getting ready to head back out to Dallas next Tuesday. So uh, the tour goes on. This will be the last leg in the American tour, and uh, we're excited to come uh, to Phoenix and Las Vegas and head west. Hey, real quick, do you remember the very first time you played Phoenix? Uh, do I remember the very first time? Yes. I do not remember the first time. Yeah. Hmm. Um, anyways, uh, I wanted to ask too, really quickly before I let you go. Um, 
You had uh, two honors. Uh, well, the first one was the Songwriters Hall of Fame uh, recipients back in 2004, I believe. And then the second one, well, three, three years ago, uh, you guys were finally inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, what was the experience like being at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with being there and, and being finally inducted? Was it vindication for you? Was it? But, you know, it, no, it's not a vindication. It was, I think it feels uh, like a lifetime achievement award, to be honest with you. Um, you know, we were eligible for a long, you know, 15, 16 years before we were even nominated. So we weren't really uh, losing any sleep over it, but it was very nice to be acknowledged. Uh, it was great to be, you know, to be part of it and to have that on the, uh, you know, on the, on the trophy, trophy mantle, so to speak. Hmm. Great. Alrighty. Well, I think that's pretty much it, John. Like I say, I appreciate your time. And again, the fans are looking forward to the show. Uh, I guess you can call it an encore presentation, if you will, from last year's show. And uh, well, there, I, I couldn't hear the very last part of the question. Uh, the, your fans are looking forward to the show again. Like I said, you guys were here a year ago, and I'm sure many of them will come back out again. Well, good. I mean, yeah. Listen, this has really been an amazing experience to, after all these years, to have uh, our, this kind of type of uh, mega, you know, mass popularity and. Uh, have people really care about the music that we made so long ago. So I'm just very proud of it and very blessed to be able to enjoy it, and I hope the fans enjoy it. Uh, any, wor any word on perhaps new music from Daryl Hall and John Oates? Nah, that won't happen. Um, Daryl's going to do is uh, get back into his TV show next year, and I've got a new album called Arkansas, which I'm releasing in 2018. So uh, we've got other plans, but um, we still, we'll still be touring as Hall and Oates as well. Great. All right, John. Well, I'll go ahead and let you go. Thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure and an honor to speak to you. And uh, like I said, we have got a lot of requests for Hall Notes videos on here, and they enjoy them uh, tremendously. All right. Well, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.